Hey guys, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my career on longevity and bone health. Do you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and aren't doing anything about it? Well, stick around because this video is going to go through some of the concerning statistics around what happens with fracture, why we treat osteoporosis, and why it is a much bigger deal than most people make it out to be. All right, so we're not trying to scare you with this video, but knowledge is potential power. And I want you to understand that if you have osteoporosis, that if you are at risk for fracture, exactly what that fracture means and how it can significantly impact your life. So we're gonna go through some statistics. We're gonna talk about, from my experience as an orthopedic surgeon, how I saw people suffer from fracture and really what occurred in their recovery process. I think it's really important, again, to understand why we treat osteoporosis and why you should not just stick your head in the sand and you need to do something about it. All right, so after the age of 65, falls are the leading cause of injury and indirect death. I'm gonna say that again. Falls are the leading cause of injury and indirect death. When we think about what people usually die from, usually we're thinking about heart disease, we're thinking about uh, dementia, diabetes, stroke, cancer, and all those things are important to uh, be concerned about and they're important to have strategies for prevention. But we don't talk a lot about falls. And if you look at the list of the top 10 causes of death in the US, falls is number four. And after the age of about 55, really kind of getting into 65 and beyond, the amount of the injuries from falls just gets exponentially bigger. So falls is really what you ultimately have to prevent when it comes to looking at longevity if you have osteoporosis and osteopenia. So just how many people will suffer from a fracture from osteoporosis? It's actually about 50% of women and about one in four men will have a fracture from osteoporosis in their lifetime. Obviously that risk gets bigger as you get older, but again, if you're looking at your longevity, if you're looking at living well and having a good quality of life, these are the things that you need to prevent. In the case you missed this statistic, 10 million people, 10 million adults in the United States have osteoporosis. 40 million adults have osteopenia or poor bone health. And the scary thing is most people don't know it. So if you're in the group, at least you know it, but you're not doing anything about it, we still need to actually get you on the path of doing something about it. Because again, knowledge is only potential power. The next step is to take action. So if you wanna live a long, healthy life, here are some secrets. Yes, you wanna worry about heart disease, and yes, you wanna worry about dementia and diabetes and cancer, but you also wanna worry about not falling. And the way that you try not to fall, the way that you prevent falls is by having great bone quality or at least improving your bone quality and you maintain your muscle mass you maintain your agility you maintain your ability to catch yourself if you start to fall we are always going to be challenged by gravity that's just part of living on this planet so you want to do your best to put your body in a position where you can do something about gravity where you can fight gravity and the way that we do that is by training and working on our bones and doing something for ourselves in that respect every day. Okay, so the second piece of this actually goes away from dying from falls, which is morbid enough, but this is the part that I really saw a lot of when I was practicing as an orthopedic surgeon. So this is what would happen. We would see patients that would come in and what I typically saw were hip fractures. I'll talk a little bit about shoulder fractures and spine fractures in a minute, but hip fractures in particular have a significant impact on patients. Only about a third of patients that suffer a hip fracture actually regain any appreciable independence. A third, around 30 to 35%. That's really frightening seeing that patients are suffering hip fractures earlier and earlier in their life. So imagine if you think that you're living well and you're doing all the things you're supposed to do, but then you have a hip fracture and now you've lost your independence. That is a game changer and is an absolute big deal. So a third of patients with a hip fracture. So again, how do we prevent hip fractures? and work on your bone quality, do something about your osteoporosis, and maintain your muscle mass. Those are the key things that you can do to prevent a hip fracture. Okay, and the two other fractures that you typically hear when people are talking about osteoporosis are spine fractures and shoulder fractures. So the spine fractures occur in the vertebrae of the spine, in the back. 
Those fractures typically have a much quicker recovery and not as much morbidity and mortality, meaning not as, as much uh, disease and death associated with them, but they can still be very painful, they can still be very debilitating, and ultimately can lead to loss of quality of life and loss of independence, particularly if you start having multiple of them. Shoulder fractures are really misunderstood unless you know somebody that's had one or, or have had one yourself. When you break the bone at the top of your arm, they're very difficult to operate on, they're difficult to fix, and even if you do qualify or have a surgery, the results are generally not that different than if you don't have a surgery. And what we see is that it is actually really hard to regain full range of motion of your shoulder. So uh, it is hard to do this once you've broken this bone. So again, from a bone health perspective, what is the most important thing is to prevent fracture. And you really wanna prevent that first fracture. If you've already had a fracture, then yes, we absolutely need to try to prevent that next fracture. Hi hey everybody, if you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so that we can send you notifications when new material is available. Secondly, if you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them so that you can continue to help us educate people that are concerned about their bone health. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about how we manage bone and about other ways that you can potentially improve bone health on your own, please look in the description for a link to our masterclass. That masterclass goes through how we manage bone, things that you can do on your own, and is a pretty comprehensive review of osteoporosis. So we hope to see you there. If you've made it this far, it's likely that you have osteoporosis or know someone that has osteoporosis and is concerned about their bone health. And here's the thing that we hear all the time. People don't want to do something about osteoporosis because they're afraid of the drugs. And I totally get it. And statistically, you are not alone. There is an 80% failure rate of osteoporosis drugs. And that is the failure rate for loss of adherence. People just don't want to take the drugs. And they don't want to take the drugs because they have scary side effects. They potentially have uh, side effects when you take them, so people don't feel good when they take them. Um, and they're concerned about the long-term game plan because a lot of these drugs, you can take them for a couple of years, you can improve your bone quality, improve your DEXA, but you can only take them for a couple of years. And particularly for my younger patients that are in their 50s and 60s, what is the game plan for the next 40 years? So I totally get it, and I totally understand that you don't wanna take these drugs. My argument would be, A, let's have a conversation about all the other things you can do to improve your bones. And so you might have been on a Facebook group or two and, you, and you're looking at a thing or you're taking calcium or vitamin D or whatever, but just know that there is a comprehensive solution to bone health, just like there should be a comprehensive solution to preventing dementia and a comprehensive solution to longevity. It's more than just one or two things. So I, I would encourage you to think about nutrition comprehensively. I would encourage you to think about how much protein you're getting and eating a protein forward diet. What supplements do you really need? Do you know what you're actually nutrient depleted in. Have you considered looking at the systems around your bones? So looking at hormone optimization through the lens of, uh, of your bones or your muscles. Have you talked to a specialist in that field? Have you learned anything about peptides that can help build muscle mass, uh, that can help actually stimulate osteoblasts? There are so many things that you can do for bone health. So I'd really encourage you to try to find somebody that can help you do these things. Then, and only then, in my opinion, should you have a conversation of, hey, should I be on this pharmaceutical? What is the time frame in which I should be on this pharmaceutical? What are the expectations? How are we gonna measure that improvement? So I hope you find that helpful from the perspective of, don't do nothing about bone health. If you have osteoporosis, please get active, do something. Now you have some knowledge, please take that next step and do some kind of action to get moving forward with that knowledge. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. I know it was a little bit dark and I apologize, but again, I really wanna impart that it is important to do something about bone health if you have osteoporosis, if you have a family history of falls and fragility fracture, please get moving forward in some kind of a plan. 
If you enjoyed this content, as dark as it was, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. If you know anybody that would benefit from this content, please share it with them, even if they potentially don't want to hear it. And lastly, if you are interested in learning more about what we do, please look in the description and sign up for the masterclass. Again, we're going to walk you through how we manage bone health, things that you can do on your own, and really help to empower you to manage your own bone health. Oh, and before I forget, also, we do want to hear from you. I would love to know what questions you have about this content or about other content around bone health. I would love to know if you have any thoughts about things that you would like to see presented on this channel regarding bone health or around longevity. So please leave us comments, leave us questions. We'll get to all the questions as they come in and we'll create new content uh, based on the requests that we're receiving in the comments.